turn to your, another neighbor and say, welcome to your year of the next level. I want to welcome you once again to this wonderful year. If you're still just coming back, welcome. I've told you online, if you have your brother that is not back from the village yet, send them transport money. People who are still in the village now need transport money. Uh, praise the Lord. It is our year of next level as declared by the Apostolic Bishop. And um, one of the things we must understand, like I've said it times without number, that prophecies will remain dormant until actions activate them. Prophecies will remain dormant until actions or men activate them. What are prophecies? Things that are meant to be. 95% of prophecies are things that are meant to be and not things that will be. Hey, someone say amen. Someone say amen. amen. How many people have you heard men of God say great things about them? How many of them ended up great? When great things are said of you, it means that greater things are required of you. So, when you hear great things, it's not just about shouting the loudest amen. It's about making up your mind to do those things that will bring about those great things. Jesus went to the temple and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me. Uh, uh, this day it is fulfilled in your, in your, in your own very, in your own very eyes. But what the Acts of Apostles tell, tell us, and B Jesus began to do. Uh -huh. Without the doing, there will be no manifestation. If you don't do, you will not see or live in the realities of it. Believe me, this church and this wonderful people of God that the Lord has brought to COT here. We are not just a bunch of amen clamoring people. When God has anointed his servants and has given us what he wants us to live in, it is now left for us to know what those things are and activate them. That is why this morning we are going to start a series on the keys to activating the next level. Keys to activating the next level. I'll be reading a lot of scriptures today. Matthew chapter 20, from verse 20 to 28. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee, of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What will thou? What will thou? What do you want? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left, in thy kingdom. Can you imagine? This woman came and said to Jesus, I want my two sons in your kingdom, one on your left, the other one on your right. I want them to be your assistant and special assistant. Hmm. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what you ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with my baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left it is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them who it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation. What are these two people saying? So we are all here to waste our time. You saw us here and you want to come. You saw, we've been here for three years. And you just want to come and sit in pastor's right hand. Who are you? Who are you? Who from you? 
But Jesus called them and said, he know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be, will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. It and to give his life for a ransom for many. We're going to be reading a lot of scriptures today, but I want you to get me. Follow me carefully. You see, this mother wanted position for her sons. But she did not understand the price that it will cost. She wanted position, but she did not understand the price. You want the next level. Will you understand the price for the next level? Next level is not an automatic thing that God will just say, my son, wake up. You are going to the next level immediately. You want the next level. Will you understand the price for the next level? You, you have this popular saying, big man, big problem. Would you want to pay the price? They said, if you tell a poor man what it takes to be a big man, he will say, let me be a poor man. God has ordained position for each of us. The position is, for, is set by him. But the prize, to some extent, is set by the enemy. Are you willing to pay the price for that position? Are you willing to pay the price for that next level? The prize is whatever has to be overcome to get to that position. The prize is whatsoever it, you have to overcome to get to that next level. You want to get to the next level? The price is whatsoever. It is not just one. Whatsoever. You must have this in mind. Whatsoever. As long as it is within the confines of the scripture, I must get to my next level. There is no price for those who give up. There's no price. There's no price for those who went to 75%. There's no price for those who stopped at 90%. There is a price for those who crossed the finishing line. That's where the prize is. That is where the prize is. There is no prize. This is not the university. Attempted university. No, 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 no. You want to get to the next level? You must. Listen to me. That's why you see that only a chunk of people live in the fulfillment of the prophetic. Only a few people. Because only a few people are ready to pay the actual price. Now, I want to get you thinking this morning. I want to get you thinking this morning. What, what will it cost me to get to my next level? That's what I want to get you thinking this morning. It's not just to say bigger amen. Because listen to me. The words I speak to you this day are life. I'm telling you, they are spirit. Believe me. Someone say Amen. Wanting a position is easy. Be, being willing to pay the price is harder. Wanting a position. How many of you want next level here? Let me see your hand up. Don't be religious here. Uh -huh, that's wonderful. Now, in reality, how many of you are willing to pay that price? Uh -huh. nice. And you still do the same thing you were doing last year. You see the point? <laughs> Every position set by God has an opposition from the enemy. Every position set by God, next level, you know, it's a place. Every position set by God has an opposition from the enemy there. And God allows that for, that, for that enemy, God allows that enemy to be there, that opposition to be there, so that it will in turn strengthen you for his glory. 
That's why you will never look at the enemy with fear. Now, let me tell you something. There is no position that you face that God has not already given you power to have victory over. If God brings up a seat and keeps for you, I say, this is your seat. Listen carefully. The enemy is there. But before God brought that seat, he has already made a provision for you to take care of the enemy. But when you look at the enemy and you are fearful, you will not get to that seat. There is no position God has provided for you that he has not given you the ability to get to that place. There are certain things we wanted to do, sometimes we want to do something, and then people will say, Pastor, we cannot do it. We say, no, let's go there. You see some people drawing back. We say, let's go. When we get there and get the victory, people say, ah, why? Any position God has given to you, God has already made provision for your victory. You must not look at any enemy with fear. Now, your opposition is always related to the call and the purpose over your life. You must understand that. Every opposition you face in life, they are related to that call God has brought over your life and your purpose. Now, without the prize, God will never get the glory. Someone say, without the prize, God will never get the glory. It is through the prize that we appreciate the position. <laughs> you see why it looks as if mothers want to protect that child to any length. It is because the price they paid in carrying that child for nine months, they cannot just give up on that child easily. No matter how the father will just come and say, I will kill this boy. This boy is very stubborn. This boy is very, this woman will say, after nine months and pain, you want me to kill this child? It's not possible. The price you pay for something will make you appreciate the position. That is why there are certain things you should never ever try to give people on a platter. If not, they will abuse it. There are certain free meals and free tickets that when people get, because they do not pay the price for it, they abuse it. Someone say a bigger amen. Now look at these people that wanted to stay at the left and right hand of God. Turn quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 36 to 40. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto them, unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Hey. See these people that wanted to be at the left and right hand. And God took Peter and these two sons of Zebedee. That the mother said, put this one at the left and right of thy kingdom. Hmm. And began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he commented unto his disciples and findeth them asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me? an hour. Hey! So watch. During this critical and intense time, Jesus took the same two people that wanted to be in the left and right. Like God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. These people that wanted the exalted position, he took them. At the critical time, at the time that mattered most, when it was time to now bet the whole process, he took them. He said, okay, you want to, you want to be left and right, have you? Now come. Let's go. Let us go. Do you know what happened? 
These two people could not stay away for one hour. And yet, they wanted to stay left and right. You want the next level. When they now tell you, come and come and pay the price for the next level. You say, nah, I, can't. I want to enjoy myself small. This year is still starting. How will I start this year? How does the point? That's why some people don't experience that next level. Because when that critical time comes, you do not hear. He said, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is too small. Life will pose questions this year to you. Critical questions and critical examinations that you need to pass for you to move on to the next class. Will you be found wanting? Will you fail or will you pass? It's not about wanting that seat. It's not about wanting to be that person. It is not about wanting that position. It's about asking yourself, am I ready to pay the price? Now, let me tell you the truth. Opposition you face is against God's ordained position, not opposition against you personally. Did you hear what I just said? God brings a seat and keeps here and tells you, my son, I want you to sit down. And you sit down. And then you find people telling you, my friend, will you get up from that seat? My friend, will you get up from that seat? My friend, will you do this? That opposition is not against you. Don't take it too personal. That opposition is against that seat. It's against the person that put that seat. That's why you must understand how to deal with oppositions. Every next level has the next level demon. Has the next level opposition. You think that, oh, that I will, some people say, if I get money now, my problem will finish. The moment you get money, your problem doubles. Uh-huh. Because every position will always come with this opposition. Even greater. The more you go. See, that's why you need a strong heart. You need a resolved heart because it's not easy anywhere. Anybody who expects it to be easy in this life is not ready for the top. Someone say bigger amen. Now listen carefully. When you stand before God, you will not answer for what you wanted to do. But you will answer for what God has called you to do. I'm trying to make this emphasis. I'm trying to lay these foundations so that you understand more and more why you need to be resolved this year to get to that next level. The next level is right in your court. It's right in your backyard. It's right inside in front of your doorstep. It's right there. But are you going to make up your mind to it? He said, right from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is suffering man. I don't need the violence take it in my force. We're not saying you should go and get knife and move around. Oh, John the Baptist is violent. I'll be violent. No, 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 no. It means violent faith. The attitude that says no. Do you know we, I use myself as an example and a lot of people, let me tell you, any man you see doors that have opened up to him, you will be shocked how many times they've knocked on those doors. They've knocked on those doors. <laughs> Spiritually, your voice is not recognized until you have had track record and consistency. It's not something that happens overnight. It takes persistence. Imagine now you tell your kids, you're going out, you say, hey, you people sweep this house. And then you come back. They say, the house is not swept. And they say, hey, mommy, we are washing plate. You did wonderful, but you did not do what I told you to do. You would have done this one. After doing this one, what do you do? If you want to wash plate, you can wash plate. That's what happens to us when we go and do something else. Now, I want to ask again to everybody here 
who is ready for their next level? Who is ready for their next level? I want to ask another question. Who is ready to pay the price for the next level? Give me Psalm chapter 75. I want you to understand something about the next level. Psalm chapter 75, verse 6 and 7. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down and he set it up another. I want you to understand this. God is the original promoter of men. The original lifter of men. That's where I'm coming to balance. Regardless of whatsoever you do in this life, looking for that next level, taking the necessary steps for that next level, you should also understand that if you do everything and do not acknowledge God, <laughs> he is still the one that promotes. You know, some people say, you know what? That's why sometimes you see people, they want to go and do certain things. I know, they are not the one that promotes people. Though. And that's why sometimes you even go and do something. And then someone will say, over my dead body, will you be promoted? Anybody who is using over his dead body, I tell that person, you have maybe two or three days to withdraw what you said. If not, I'll tell God, you've heard him now, or you've heard her. Oh yeah, answer that person's prayer. Because I will still get to where I want to get. It is not your uncle that promotes. It is not your pastor that promotes. It is not that leader that promotes. That's why you must understand that when you are serving or when you are doing things this year, do it in sincerity, in sincerity unto God. Because he is the one that sees and he is the one that will promote. Let me tell you, this year one of the things you should never try in this life is to be a hypocrite. Fake life. You are not getting any income. You are posting online that so much money is there. That's why you will go broke this year. If you know that this business is not paying you, and this business no get road, stop posting online so that your helpers will help you. Ah. Be honest. You are posting pictures and we think you're a millionaire. Whereas, you will go home and drink it. It will not make sense. Even the, the angels that God has sent to help you will look at you online and say, no, this one is, let me help somebody else. Ah, this one is good though. Ah. I think we should take small from himself and even give his neighbor. Be real this year. You know, you know one of the things that has made people not receive certain things? Because even those who want to help them are looking at them like they will need help from them. It's there as you do. That's what like. Packaging is very wonderful. But don't package yourself with, you know, uh, have you heard what forever said now? Papa. Uh, they call you Papa. And you are coming there to, you know, sport with food. The moment they call you Papa, you know the Papa now, you will not. You won't, you won't tell someone who is calling you Papa to have cut you something. Not this year. Someone say amen. amen. Now let me tell you this. You, you are a steward of God. And ultimately, how you manage what God has placed over your life will dictate where God can promote you to. How you manage what God has placed in your hands will dictate where God can take you to. Let me bring it down a little bit to the finances. God is giving you money and you are busy spending it anyhow. On things that have no eternal value. You spend it on women or men. Drinks. Stupid and useless things. And you expect God to give you the riches of the kingdom. So if he gives you the riches of the kingdom, you will waste the riches of the kingdom in the kingdom of darkness. 
You see why the riches of the kingdom cannot come to your hand? Ultimately, how you manage what God has put in your hand will determine how he will promote you. It goes around to every other thing. If you don't manage properly, you will not be given the next. Now, watch this. Luke chapter 16, from verse 10 to 12. I said I'll be reading a lot of scriptures. Now, listen. Faithfulness over little is the prerequisite for much. Faithfulness over little is the prerequisite for much. So if you want to have much, the most important thing is that you should be faithful over little. Now watch this, what the scripture says. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So this is what Jesus was trying to say. If you are going to be unfaithful in little, you are going to be unfaithful in much. There is no point in giving you much. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I give you 10,000, you cannot manage it. There's no point me giving you 100,000 because you will not manage it. There's no point giving you. That's what Jesus is saying. So if I'm giving you this level now that you find yourself and you're not managing it proper, why would I give you the next level? I'm trying to make it sink in your head. I'm giving you this now. You are still using bank, but at least you can find money to go to anywhere you want to go. You can recharge your phone. You can eat. But you're not managing it properly. How do you want me to now give you enough so that you can buy a car and give this one? How do you want me to give it to you? There are some people, the moment finances come to their hands, that's it. They will squander it so much. And you wonder how God will look at this person and say, become a billionaire for the kingdom. Hmm? God gives you money. Throughout this year, throughout last year, you could not count off a single project you financed in the kingdom. And you are asking for kingdom wealth. No be juju be that. You are asking for kingdom wealth. And a full year has passed. You have not financed any project in the kingdom. Hey! Your own must be really, is, must be a really serious problem. It's not village people again, no. It's ancestors. You know, there's a difference between village people and ancestors. Ancestors are in the underworld. Village people are still around. I'm serious. This year we are praying for kingdom advancement. As you are praying for kingdom advancement, start in that very little. That very little capacity. You don't need to give everything. You don't need to be the biggest sponsor of life of it or COT. No. But in your very own little way, with time, you will start seeing yourself even doing more because more, com- more is coming into your hand. It's a very simple thing. Don't go and be arguing with people whose lives are as crooked as the argument. I was talking to people while we were praying yesterday. I said, what is the point? I'm counting in one million naira. And I'm giving God 100,000. And I'm keeping my 100,000 to myself. And someone is saying, no, why should I even give God all this big 100,000? Whereas I knew when I was counting 100,000 and I was giving 10,000. I said, God, eh, just, just give me small 1 billion. Let me just be keeping 100 million and giving 900 million. Uh-huh. I don't mind. You see, is this your little brain? That will make you think that God needs your money. God does not need your money. You are the one that needs to give God your money. Uh, when we say some of these things, you might not understand it till you start understanding. Have you seen somebody who is really doing well and he does not have a stream where he is putting money? Can't check. This is a, is a take-home assignment. Go and check anybody who is doing so well in life. I'm not talking about someone who is calculating change. Who is doing so well in life. Go and find out. There is a place where they are pumping. There is a place where they pay their price. Don't be part of those people that after the, after the market is over and then they start gossiping. Ah, no, 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 no. 
Be among the people who come for trading. After trading, let people talk that you give so much to God. Is it your money? That I'm able to sign checks in millions and billions. Is it your problem? Pray that you will have the same opportunity to do so. Is someone someone say, eh, you give so much. Tell that person, my friend, eh? pray that you will even give more. Because it means that you have more. Let me go back to what God. Now look at what verse 11 said. Therefore, you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Can I put it to you that God will never ask you to manage what you don't have? Hello? I want you to understand. You see, I'm trying to teach today. I'm not trying to preach. When you are done with this message, go and get this tape. Listen to it. It will. I want this tape to shape this your ear. Listen to it. When you go back home, bring down all this thing I'm saying. God will never tell you to manage what you don't have. And how you manage what you have will determine if you can go to the next level. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, in my life, there's no limitation when I'm found faithful. You see, let me tell you, God loves everybody, but God does not trust everybody. God loves every believer, but God does not trust every believer. Uh, pray that God will trust you. The people that are trusted are the people that are entrusted. Did you understand what I said now? Hey, I can have six children, but the only person I can give my check will be one person. I can have Ten children, I can only give two. Hello? I can have four sons, but I can only leave my key with one. God can love every of you, but my trust only one or two. Because of their track record of faithfulness. How many resources can God trust you with? Oh, my God. Please sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I want this thing to sink into your life this year. You need to really be faithful for God to trust you. Not love. His love is shared abroad. You want to tell God that I want you to trust me with the resources of this kingdom. But you have to prove it. Trust is proven over time. That you give me 100,000, that you give me a 50,000, that you give me 1 million naira, and that 1 million naira, I am using it faithfully as it is God's property. Why will God not release his riches in billions? I... Have you seen wasters? They go from hero to zero. Because God cannot be a supporter of waste. Waste of resources, waste of gifts and talents. God does not, he has no business in that. The people God entrusts with true riches, with the riches of the kingdom, with the resources of the kingdom, are those people who over time have proven themselves faithful to be trusted. Entrust. You know what it means to entrust? They've given you something out of trust. Pray that this year, it does not matter who. You can be on the keyboard and God is it. I will entrust you with true riches. On the base. Everywhere. Are you, let, are, you, are you listening to me? Anywhere. At whatsoever age.
It starts with little. So in case you're asking, why is God blessing these people? It's not because his love is above these people. No. That's why sometimes when you come to your family, you see that your parents are inclined to give more delicate responsibilities to certain people in that house. True or false? It is not because of love. They love them equally. But trust. Who will keep this thing the way it is I kept it when I come back? That's who is going to call and say, keep this thing for me. Oh, if this is only the only thing you will go back home with today, I want you to mark this thing down in your diary and make and make up a resolution that this year from today going forward. Hmm. Listen to me. I can tell you that for the past five years. You, are, you will never see frivolity in my life. You know what frivolity is? Spending to please myself. But you will not understand. You will not understand. Sometimes you, they tell you, pastors bought private jet. Go and check properly. Are they buying that private jet because of pleasure or because of the necessity of moving from one place to another? That's why you should not be wagging your mouth. Though. What you don't understand, don't comment on. <laughs> If that your pastor that does not own a private jet is that faithful, why has the true riches not come to him? Leave that in. I'm not as faithful as Bishop Oedepo. With time I would be. Yes. Oh. He said, someone will just open his mouth and he say, talk. Over time, God knows the people he can trust. See the way redeem is done, and the kind of money that is in redeem, that the full nation. See, redeem's money is more than the full nation's budget for five years or ten years. If they give it to that your pastor, that pastor somewhere, will he not squander it? You see why that money has to be entrusted to such a man of integrity. The little ones we gave the politicians in this country, you see what they have done with it. How do I say, oh, pastors are this? Give pastors this country and watch this country change overnight. Which government institution is as functional as churches in this country? No government institution anywhere. I say it anywhere. No government institution. I run this place more than the local government we are under. Let them come. They will understand what system is. It's not a joke. So your pastors are this, pastor than this. We are the carriers of management now. They should come and let's teach them. Trust. My son just opened his mouth. Oh, pastors are this, pastors are this. Don't mind them. Don't, don't, don't follow them up. These people are highway children. Don't mind them. God will help them. Is someone getting something already? Are you being blessed this morning? Yes. Now, this is not to take away your fancy. This is to, I want, I want a shift in your mind. Now, from today, you will go back home and get angry. I say, no, no wonder. No wonder. Money came to my hand. A lot of things came to my hand. I had a lot of time. And how it went, I can't explain. Can't even say I used it for this, I used it for this, I used it for that. No wonder. God, see from today I'll start being faithful with anything you send my way you see anything you receive is sent by God through people or through enterprises what comes into your hand is what you can manage the moment you can manage the next level let me tell you it will automatically open And remember, manage is not just by saving. <laughs> because someone will say, I save a lot. It's not by saving. Faithfulness is not just by keeping. Faithfulness is also by putting to good use to bring out more. Is someone getting what I'm saying this morning? 
the things God gives to you, the talent, the gift, if God is not seeing it, you can keep it one place. It is useless to God. That person that brought one talent is useless to God. God wanted him to multiply it. I give you this thing. After 10 years, you are still in the same level spiritually. And you are praying for the mantle of Bishop Oyedepo. Are you not joking with your destiny? Whereas the one God gave you, you have not even used it. And you are expecting for the next level. Expecting it. How will it come? To be a mirage. You won't even dream about it. You will just be daydreaming. Daydreaming is not written in the Bible. It's called slumber. You wake up from it. You find out there is nothing. It's not real. Can you ask yourself, can you make up your mind today and say, Lord, I will be a faithful manager. I told you previously, God is looking for managers. People that will manage his resources, his giftings. Looking for managers. People that will put it to good use. People that will upgrade it. If God gives you something, he's not expecting that thing in that form back. That is why when you give him something, you are not going to expect what, the same thing you give to God. God is going to give it to you back in a bigger fold. That's why when God gives you something, you will also give him back bigger. Oh. Listen, our dealings with God should teach us now. Have you given anything to God and not received multiple? So should God not give you something and not receive multiple back? You want when God will give you one million naira? No, no, no. Only he needs to give you in thousands. Even in hundreds. Because in that seed that he has given to you has life to multiply. Everything God created, there is something very critical about it. It has life. Life means multiplication in it. Don't watch everything God created. Ah, it can multiply. Uh, <laughs> uh, blessed are you that you are starting this year with such message. It means that if you follow these things, your year, hey, people will be shocked. Though. 2022, people will be shocked. Though. But you must put to good use these things. This is, this, life is not about cruiser. Life is not about cruiser. Forget all this cruise. Oh. Don't catch cruise in life. Oh. Hmm. One of the most foolish set of people I've seen. And this boy is called Yahoo Boys. They make money. Within two months, they go broke. They're looking for somebody else to do. It. Foolishness. Nothing. Give three quarters of the money these people make in one hit of their stupid robbery to some people. Eh? <laughs> what do we see in their life? We are amazing. Yes. You know, we hear stories now. If someone someone says someone cashed out 500,000 US dollars. Where is that money? Foolishness. They'll keep throwing the money everywhere. Foolishness. Why do I have a message for these people? You see this year? <laughs> it will become less fashionable. And judgment is coming. I, I, I was saying it. There's a heavy storm coming. Aye. The cycle is almost going to end. It will return. I pity people. And by the way, and to be number two, eh? please, young men, eh? be careful. Be careful about ladies. Oh. Some of these boys have taking away every form of destiny from some of these ladies in their bid to make money. But my problem is here, I saw this one online, this is not my uh, destiny. Young men are using young women this way. What if young women start using young men? It's going to, <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Oh. It's going to be terrible. Oh. <laughs> You know, we have not recovered from the apple, Adam ate. Oh. Just one apple. Oh. We are like this. 
But the more serious not. I was really angry last week when I saw some videos when someone was you know, stabbing somebody and I'm like, uh, uh, okay. And some people have the guts to be praying for these boys and taking tithes from them. But I make one prayer. Any pastor who is sponsoring some of these things, let his daughter be among those people that will do those things too. Or the sister. Yes, the sisters. I don't know why we feel comfortable approving terrible things. <laughs> Sorry for another. The first key to activating, I have a lot of things to say here. Okay. Vision. Someone say vision. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Quickly, the media. Isaiah 55, verse 11. The book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in whatsoever I sent it. Vision will keep your hopes filled. Your hope is the prerequisite for substance. What is vision? The ability to see, to paint a picture of the next level. The ability to paint a picture of what you want. Vision has to have a corresponding action. If you say you have a vision, then there must be an action. If not, it is idle. It's daydreaming. You have a vision. Write the vision what? Hey, play. Like whosoever did it. I shall run. So if there is no action, if there is no running, the vision is useless. Why we're writing the vision is so that when you see this vision, you run. Now I want to actually I want to bring it down to us. That next level, do you even know what that next level is? Or are you waiting on God to give you anything you want? I want you to write that thing down. Are you waiting on God to give you anything God pleases? Or do you know where your next level is? Have you created it? Have you written it down? Have you drawn it? If you have not seen it, actually, it is actually true that you will not go there. Before you go to any destination, don't you picture your destination? A man without a vision has no destination. Anywhere can become his destination, even mediocrity. So you're saying next level, next level, next level. Do you even know where your next level is or what your next level is? One of the ways I will know you don't have any next level or you are not going to live in any next level is if you've not pictured that next level. So when you go back home today and this is your case, the first thing you are meant to do is sit yourself down and draw that thing down. Draw it down. This is what, I'm, this is what that next level is. Now that vision will propel you into action, into going to take the corresponding action required for that vision to come into reality. Vision we produce discipline. Because without discipline, you cannot achieve much. Now, when you see, when you have a picture of where you want to go, it means that you will not do every other thing or just about anything. Because of where I'm going to, there are certain things I cannot do. You know one of the reasons why some of you, or some people, not let me not say some of you, well, this is a broad broadcast. You know why some people will never be great in life? Because they don't even know they can be great in life. 
But do you know why some people do certain things in life? Because they would ne- it has never crossed their mind that greatness will come to them. If you know that you will be a president, if you know that you will be a front runner in that your field, there are certain things you know that you cannot do today because tomorrow it will become a scandal for you. You can't see the people who misbehave today. It's because they have no vision for tomorrow. Is someone listening to me here? Listen to me. This vision is what will create discipline because you know where you are going to. You know why I'm not doing some of the things I know I can do? It's because when I get to that place tomorrow, my history will be brought up. So the vision of where I'm going to keeps me disciplined today. Be careful the way you live your life now. (laughs) It's not about getting to the top. It is remaining in the top that is the matter. Have we not seen people? They've gotten to the top quite all right. One year. We don't hear about them again. They've become mainstream artists. After two years, they become up and coming again. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, but your vision should be based on the word of God. Some say the word of God. Now, when when you give God a vision, so you must give God a vision. So you must give God, this is what, talk to God, you know. This is what, that's this is the picture of it. So when you give God that vision, God, it gives God an opportunity to endorse that vision. So listen, this is why you see a lot of people, they cannot get into certain realities. Because they are not giving God anything to work with. That's why when you go to a man in the office in the secretariat, the first thing they will ask you is, bring a proposal. Without proposal, what are we going to approve? Give God a proposal in the form of a vision. If God approves it, that is when provisions will be made. Provisions are not made until a vision is casted. I wish, I wish you were in my heart and understand what God is saying. <laughs> vision is not, I know I will be rich. Vision is not, I want to be rich. Vision is, within the next three years, I'm already getting training to be this. After six months, I'm going into this next course to make sure that I get certified. This now, God has something he's working with. Now, God reviews all these steps and said, okay, no problem. My friend, no problem. I've endorsed it. But this one, you will remove it because it does not fit my plan. If you go to this gray area, you will backslide. Okay, so remove it. Let me put this one here. After everything, the next thing that after his approval, he sends a provision. That's why any vision that God has backed up can never know lack. Your thinking is the platform for his performance. <laughs> Your thinking is his platform for his performance. Open with me to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. So he cannot do except you ask or think. So, if you do not bring that vision to him, if you do not ask or think, he will not do. Who is getting this thing in his spirit? Who is getting this? Eh? I want you to replay this tape. In fact, this should play, replay this tape. Eat this tape and make sure this thing sinks in. <sighs> go 
God will do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask or think. Now listen, his ability is insatiable. What he can do. But he cannot do except what you ask or think. Oh. Now, I want, I want you to understand this one too. You cannot separate your life from what you expect. <laughs> hey! You cannot separate your life from what you expect. Expectations will be a reflection of your reality. Uh, or your life is what? A reflection of your expectations. Someone say, Amen. That's why you know you must. That's why you know you must be positive in anything you see. Who am I speaking to directly today? I need someone to have a change. Everything about your life is a picture of what you expect. About God, God can do it. God, God can do anything you give him. Can even do more than that. But do you expect that? What is faith? Faith is the what? The evidence of things. The substance of things. What will create hope? Vision. It's vision now. If there is no vision, you cannot hope because hope is attached to the picture. Uh -huh. And then hope will produce a substance. Are you getting the point now? Uh, don't worry, I'll finish the vision, then we'll go. We'll finish the vision, then we'll go. Look at the, the sad reality of a person that has no vision. Watch. Lamentations 2 verse 9. It says, Her gates are sunk into the ground. He had destroyed and broken her bars. Her kings and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. In utter darkness. Terrible. Terrible, terrible situation. <laughs> A man, there is no level of, listen carefully, the greatest level of deformity is blindness, not physical, but imaginative blindness. The moment you lose your vision, you lose your hope. Go and check all these people that have retired before their time. Their vision has expired, so they have nothing again to live for. The moment your hope dies, you start dying. You start retreating. Because there's nothing to fight for anymore. There's no motivation for life. There's no reason to live. Vision is that thing that wakes. Did you know? Did you, that thing that wakes you up when every other person is sleeping. That's what we call dream last week. Is that not true? So you wake up every morning. You take that discipline every morning because of the picture in your mind. Because of what you have seen. So it makes you abstain from certain things. It makes you go to places people are running away from. Just because you want to get to where you are going to. Vision is not only for believers. That is why when unbelievers have vision, they tend to get it too. 
And when believers don't have vision, they abuse spirituality. And they start using by God's grace for mediocrity. They know they cannot do it. This year, this year must be different. Someone say a bigger amen. Now, let me tell you the things that vision will reveal. Number one, vision will reveal your purpose. Cast and show me your vision. I will know your purpose. I know where your purpose is. I will know why you are doing that. Thing. Vision will reveal your future. So, you tell me your vision. I know your vision. I see your vision. Obviously, I'll know where you end up. There are certain people that just by sitting down listening to them, knowing what they say, okay, no problem. I know this guy. I know where this guy is going to end up. There are some certain guys when you see again, a man without vision, you already know where the future is going to. It's going to be dark. See, please, if a man is going by 9 o'clock or by 10 o'clock when there is no light and has no headlamp and is driving, don't you know where he's heading to? Eh? If he likes, let him be going 5 km per hour or 120 km per hour or 240 km per hour. We still know where he's going to. So, is that not true? Because where, no, where there is no vision, the people what? We know their destination. Now, the third thing is that vision reveals your values. Now, your values will determine what you will and won't do to obtain your vision. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying now? I know you want to get rich. I know you want to be this. Your vision will tell me your values. Your values will tell me what you will do or what you will not do to get to where to get to actualize your vision. Mm -hmm. So the way we are now in church. Church people say, man, you know that it's not everything that we do to obtain our vision. But when I see your vision, I also, I also see where your value is. The people that will cast vision, in the process of casting that vision, you already know that they can do anything. Uh -huh. Just the way they talk or the instances they give you. then you know, that value will now require, ah, I cannot do everything. We cannot just do this thing to get this. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Your holy name. When you have a vision, God will bring in the resources and people to make it a reality. Stop asking God for men. Stop asking God for money. Stop asking God for resources when you've not gotten vision. It's just like somebody will come to you, sir, I need two million naira. You will, you will tell the person, my friend, will you get out of my office? But if this person brings a proposal, you go through the proposal, you see that this thing is workable. Even if you cannot give him, you can lead him to somebody who can. Now, we are going to God as the person who has the ability to give us everything. And you are not giving God a working manual. You see how funny it is. That's why he's not approved. God, I just want to, no. Give him something. Give him something. Tell your neighbor, give him something. Yes, no matter your age. See, you are 60 now, and you say, Pastor, round up now. I don't understand what you are saying. Let me go and eat first. I'm not rounding up. You need, to, you need to understand. You need to understand what I'm talking about here. What do you want this year? This year, we are not coming for your burial. Though. So this year, yes, we are not coming for your burial. It means that this year, you are here with us. You must do something this year. What do you want to do this year? He's not coming to church. We know all of us will be coming to church. What do you want to do this year? Write it down. Explain it. Yes. 
you call your children and say, this is what I want to do. Help me. I told you last year, last week, about the people who started their journeys at old age. Old age. When Caleb was eight, he said, my strength, ah, as if I'm 40. When did God call Abraham? Very old. When did Noah build the ark? You. 50 years. My student, come on, I want to go back to the village. What are you going back to the village for? To go and look for whose land is encroaching into your land. No wonder. No wonder. Productivity starts dropping. That's why some companies they don't want people above the age of forty. Because some yeah, the natural African man at the age of fifty said, "I've seen it all." So they start causing trouble there. They see young people. They start abusing and start threatening those people. You know, they would just say, "You know, when I was at your age, my brother, what we're asking is, what are you doing now? When I was at your age, we understand you did it. What are you doing now?" Someone say amen. amen. Now, every vision that you cast, as long as you're a child of God, should be bigger than you. Aye. Did you hear what I said? Every vision that you cast, as long as you're a child of God, should be bigger than you. Because God wants you to fulfill something in your life that only him can get glory for. And God cannot take glory in small things. God only takes glory in great things. So your vision better be great. And then, since you say, Pastor, I cannot get a big vision. Let me now go. See, let me tell you, you have no other option than to get a great vision. You have no other option. The only option, you don't have two. You only have one option. Get a great vision. If you don't finish it, your children will finish it. Start that great vision. Oh. Vision is not something that gives you a source of income. Mm-mm. That one is business proposal. You know, vision unites and brings people together. Um, I'll round up with this. Vision. Tied to the eternal purpose while you are here. It's not about money. Listen. When vision is in full operation, you will know by the level of resources heaven has sent to it. God is interested in purpose. Are you listening to me? You see this thing called kingdom? Hey, it is the thing that gets the highest level of allocation. If your vision, the more the vision has kingdom in it, the more allocation you have from the kingdom. Listen to this tip again, again and again. Because faith comes by hearing and what? The word of God. Teacher, man, when you get home, listen to this tip again and again. Men of God, listen to this again and again. The more there is room for the kingdom and the vision, the more there is allocation from the kingdom. <laughs> The kingdom should be the priority in the vision. Then the vision itself becomes a priority to God in release. 
the kingdom should be the priority in the vision. That's in your vision. And then it becomes a priority to God in his release. Because God has a lot of people he wants to release things to. But the people he's going to give immediate attention are the people who have him in mind. That's why he said when he told you to pray, he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. When you do that daily, what you are trying to tell him is this. Every day I stand to propagate your kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. The kingdom, the priority in the vision. The vision is not about, about your family alone, yourself, my children. It should transcend a generation. It should have the purpose why God brought you here on earth. You must create that vision. Why am I doing something? Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? That's what you should ask yourself. I want to drive this. I want to be this. I want to be that. Why am I doing that? Why? Define it. <laughs> Stand to your feet, everybody.